Hey everybody, well, we got everybody separated out over here. Got Stoney here with a few used. I don't know if Stoney's doing anything or not yet. He's still learning. Uh, we got Longshot over there with his. He seems to know what he's doing. And Stu's in here with his girls here. And I know in at least two cases, Stu knows what he's doing. Well, we'll see. At least I think he knows what he's doing. We'll find out in 17 days. We'll see if they come back or not. If they don't come back in 17 days, then Stu know what he's doing. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna hang this camera up. So I don't have to hold on to it the whole time. There we go. All right, today, I said we're gonna come back in a week and I'm gonna discuss with you why I put what brands with what use. But we're gonna change that slightly. Because I've noticed the other day, we've had a few new people coming in and subscribing and I figured, well, I got to thinking about it, and I thought, okay, why are you subscribing to here? Well, if you're doing that, it's, it's not to watch me move round bales or fix fence. It's you want to learn about painted desert sheep, because that's what this is about, painted desert sheep. So you either have them, and you just want to see what someone else is doing, or maybe you just bought the first ones, and like everybody else, you go to YouTube for the videos, or maybe you're thinking of getting some, maybe next year you're thinking of getting some, and you want to learn more about the sheep if you can. So I thought, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take, and it might take two, three videos in here. We're going to concentrate just on painted desert sheep and really talk about and explain and discuss them. Because I got to thinking, if you're doing that, you're doing the same thing I did. A little lot, not quite a year ago, I was selling the black bellies, I was selling the mouflons, and I was going to buy, and I bought my first ewes, and I brought them in. And I thought, I really didn't know what I was doing. I bought those, and then my son-in-law, he was doing the Texas dolls, but he had a few painted desert ewes. He decided to get out, totally out of sheep, move out, so I bought his painted desert ewes. And that's where I started. And today, now, eight, nine months later, I realize I got lucky. I really got lucky, and most of us don't get lucky. So I thought, I really we should take some time and discuss a few things with you about painted desert sheep that you should think about if you're just starting or you're just thinking of getting in because it's about your goals, what you think, what you want, and kind of look at some of that instead of relying on what I did, which was just dumb luck. I got dumb luck. I ended up getting exactly what I wanted and I didn't even know I was getting it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna discuss a little bit about what are you looking for? If you're thinking you wanna do painted desert sheep, what are you looking for? and what should you look for? All right, so what did I initially want when I got into painted desert sheep? All right, I got in and I knew genetics was important. I'd spent almost two years raising the other sheep and I knew reading what other people said on the, on the Facebook groups and stuff like that, I knew what a lot of people loved was the genetics of the painted desert sheep in Texas. Everybody loved those genetics from those sheep in Texas, but nobody wanted to drive all the way to Texas to get them. And I thought, well, okay, I'm here in Nebraska, and now I'm, I'm a member of the Painted Desert Sheep Society, and I look at the page, and in the state of Nebraska, well, there's me and my son-in-law. And guess what? He don't have sheep anymore, because I got his sheep, so I'm it. So I'm it here, so now I'm thinking, genetics, I want Texas genetics. If I bring Texas genetics to Nebraska, then maybe all the people don't want to drive all the way to Texas will figure Nebraska is a whole lot closer. So now I know I want Texas genetics. Now I already got sheep, but do I have Texas genetics or not? It's another thing because when I got them, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I got lucky. I did get some Texas genetics right off the bat. So I was able to take care of that part of the equation. I have that. I know Now I know what I have that. The next thing I wanted was I see a lot of people talking about all the rams and the rams and the rams. And nobody talks about the ewes. And I'm thinking, half the genetics is coming from the ewes. All right, that's where you're gonna get half. That is just as important. I, in the days past, I did with quarter horses. And I've seen, and I know what happens with sheep, and I'm sure it happens with every livestock you do, but I especially saw it with quarter horses, is you'd get a big name stud. And literally, it started out, you got this big name stud and they're bringing these nice mares and the next thing you know, they're, if it can walk in the door on four legs and get bread, they're breeding it to them, the stud. Why? Because they want the name on the papers. 
All they want is that stud's name on that set of registration papers, and it's a great horse. Well, let me guarantee you, I've seen enough knotheads with that name or that stud on the papers to know it doesn't work that way. And that's because they took a mare that was a knothead and bred it to that good stud. Same thing's gonna happen in sheep. You want good genetics, it's not just the ram. You want good genetics from the ram and the ewe. So I look at the sheep that I've bought so far, and guess what? I got lucky again. Not everybody's gonna get lucky. So that's why we're discussing that now, because I got lucky, but it doesn't mean everybody else is going to. Now, after that, I purchased some new sheep, but now when I purchased, now I knew what I was looking for, and I knew what I wanted. And it all comes down to picking the genetics you want and picking the sheep that's gonna work right for your program. So the next thing you have to know is what sheep are right for your program. And let's start, because this was asking me, this was asking me right at the start, and I didn't know. I had no idea. When I started in January, the first ewes I got, I talked to the lady in Texas where the ewes came from, and she asked, what was I looking for? And I had no idea. I didn't want to paint another sheep. So I learned. But what do you want? What color do you want? Do you want black and white? Do you want brown and white? You don't want a tricolor? Is that what you're, are you looking for? Colors? What about horns? All right. Now, we all want big horns. All right. We all want to have big horns on. But are, are you looking for the the narrow horns that get the big curl and and they stay in tight? Say like more like a, a big horn sheep or something like that. Or do you want the long, where the horns come way out? They curl around, but they curl out. Because genetics is going to determine which one of those you get. You can still have a gold star ram. You can still have a big ram with a tight curl or with the out, but which one do you want? Because that's what you're gonna to wanna to buy. So it's not just, well, I'm gonna buy a painted desert sheep. It's gotta have, you're gonna to wanna to work with the horns that you're looking for. So that's where, what fits your program. And that's where, again, I got lucky. A lot of the sheep I purchased at the start do have the genetics I wanted. And that's what we're going to start talking about now. I told you I'd talk about my rams, what my goals were, what I wanted to do. And that's what we are going to go over now. I'm going to give you names of a bunch of rams. And if you're just starting, they're going to mean nothing to you. They, there's so-and-so ram and you, yeah, it don't matter. It doesn't mean anything. But for every ram I mention, I'm going to show you a picture. So when I say so-and-so ram, the name doesn't mean anything, but if I show you his picture, it's like, oh, okay, now I know what he's after. Now I see by the picture, that's what, he's, that's what he's going with. And that's what we're gonna do as I go over what I have here to show you what I'm thinking of doing in my program so you can think about what you wanna do in your program. So as I said, we're gonna take two or three videos and do this. We're not gonna get it done in one. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about these three rams. I have three rams here, I'm using for breeding rams. I got the little guys out there yet. We're gonna talk just about these three because that is where the first stuff comes in. All right, Texas genetics. That's what I wanted. I wanted Texas genetics. Talk to anybody knowledgeable within painted desert sheep and all you gotta come up with is the name Leon Pavlock, Pavlock Farms. There is genetics. If, if about anybody will tell you if you want Texas genetics, some of the best genetics in Texas on sheep, they're gonna be Pavlock sheep. They're gonna be something that comes from Pavlock Farms. Now, in my case, the first ewes I bought were bred, and one of those ewes was bred to a ram named Thriller. And here's Thriller. Thriller is also full name as Pavlock Farms Thriller. Ah, we have the Pavlock genetics, the what I'm looking for, those Texas genetics. And Thriller is by a ram called Pavlock Farms Dynamic. Again, the Pavlock Farms line and Dynamic is by another ram called Dino. So as you can see, we've got three generations, all Gold Star Rams. Now, I will, well, let's come back and say one thing real quick. Thriller. Thriller got measured back this summer. I know he measured at 106 for his genet on his horns. And in case you're not familiar, a Gold Star Ram, we're gonna measure the outside curl of the horn on each horn. We're gonna measure the diameter at the base, and the diameter halfway down. So we'll have six measurements. We're gonna add them all together. And if it scores 94 points, it's a Gold Star Ram. Thriller, I know, was measured this summer at 106 plus. It was over 106. 
I know his paperwork is not in yet, so he is not quote unquote officially a Gold Star Ram, but the measurements there, the genetics there, you saw dynamic and dyno, all that is your genetics coming on the Pavlock side. Now, as I said, I got a little bit lucky. So over here is long shot. And if I go pull the paperwork on long shots, dam, where he's from, that U is out of a ram uh, called Long Rider. Long Rider is by Longfellow. Again, some great genetics from Texas. And on the side, on that downside of his papers, the dam side of his papers, you're also going to find a nam ram named Maximilian. Pavlock Farms, Maximilian. It was by Pavlock Farms Gunner. So when I look at long shot for the ram I want for my ram now, there it is. There's all the Pavlock Farm breeding that I wanted. I wanted those genetics. That's what I have. Now, the case of Stu back here, Stu is also by Pavlock Farms Thriller, so he'll have dynamic, he'll have dyno in his background also, but he won't have the U side. All right, so both of those rams are really nice genetics, the Pavlov from genetics on the top, but Longshot gets an edge because he also has the Pavlov Farm genetics on the bottom and from Longfellow, so he has really good genetics there. You'll get a lot of sheep, you're gonna grab the papers on a, a sheep you get, and you're gonna see them and sometimes you'll find one gold star ram, maybe you'll find two gold star rams, a lot of cases here of mine, I'm looking at five and six Gold Star Rams on the papers. So I told you I got lucky. I didn't plan it. I didn't know what I was doing. But I got lucky and I ended up with a Ram that has the Texas genetics that I was looking for. All right, that's going to bring us to Stoney. What about Stoney? Now, Stoney, I picked up, I bought two ewes, and they're right back behind us, me here, behind you now. I bought those from, in eastern Iowa, Birch Painted Acres, Dustin Day, uh, and I bought those two ewes from him. I think it was about June. We worked in. I bought them, and we're going to go into the we're going to get into the ewes on the next video. So I won't get into that too much now. But I got to thinking, what do I want to cross with? All right, I got my good genetics here. I've got that Pavlock Farms genetics, but I want to. What am I going to cross it with? I've got some ewes bought, but. Do I want another Texas line to cross those two lines? And the next Texas line I looked at just happened to be because of Dustin Day and what we did here. The ewes that I picked up from my son-in-law came from Dustin. And the genetics here going back to a ram named Rocky that Dustin had. Well, Rocky Sire, and I've only seen this in print, I've never heard it pronounced, so tell me if I'm off, is Ojo Zarco El Chief. And that is Rocky Sire El Chief. Now, I have no idea what El Chief measured. I've had people at forums ask about that, and I've seen other people say, hey, the biggest ram in the Painted Desert was El Chief. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's a big set of horns on El Chief. And that is Rocky Sire. Well, I had a U over here that is a daughter of Rocky. So I had contacted Dustin and said, I'm going to come get two ewes. Do you have a ram? Per se, a ram lamb. And he said, you know, I got one. I was thinking of keeping it. But if you're interested, I'd sell. He sent me a picture. And it was Stoney, black and white ram, a son of Rocky. So that's going to be a grandson of El Chief. And I said, what about the ewe? Because now I'm starting to think about the ewe. I, I, and now I've done with long shot here. I'm thinking about the ewe. So he sends me a copy of the papers, sends me a picture of the papers. And I see that Rocky is out of a daughter of Boondocks. There's Boondocks. Gold Star Ram. And Boondocks sire happens to be Longfellow. We've heard that name for it, didn't we? So now I'm looking at him and I'm saying, great, I got Rocky at the top. I got a Gold Star Ram. I got El Chief of Gold Star Ram at the top. And I'm now looking at the bottom and I got Boondocks and I got Longfellow. I've got top and bottom genetics. So... There's Tony. I bought him. So now I have the 
Ojo Zarco line with El Chief. And to give you an idea, in this last year, the Painted Desert Sheep Society changed their logo. And here's their new logo. And the ram they used on the logo is Ojo Zarco Apache, which I'm assuming probably goes back to El Chief, but I'm not 100% positive. So now I have two Texas lines, which is what I'm looking for. Now I can do through Rocky, and I can do through El, El Chief on that line, and I can do through the Pavlock line, which goes back with, to Gunner. So that's the two lines I have now. The two lines I'm going back to El Chief and Gunner. And the nice part is they're not way back there. They're not four, five, six generations back. El Chief is on his papers. El Chief is on that used papers. Matter of fact, El Chief will be on his offspring's papers because he is that close. So that way I'm keeping those genetics close. So that's where I got lucky, but I got exactly what I wanted. I got the Texas genetics, bringing them to Nebraska, and we're gonna put them with really top end ewes. And like I said, I'm gonna get into the ewes later on. So we'll probably the next video, we're gonna start talking about some of the ewes and the genetics on them. But that's what you need to think about when you're starting, what genetics do you want? Where do you want them to come from? What genetics do you want? What, what color sheep do you want? What horn style do you want? All that is part of it, and you can look into it and see about it before you buy, which is not something I did. I got lucky, I happened to get what I wanted, and uh, I'm real happy with what I got there because it all starts with the genetics. I'm really big on that. I see a lot of people, I was in the Facebook groups, so people say, ah, I got my sheep. What's the best feed so I get the horns to grow big? Well, okay, let's give a good protein base, 15, 16, 17% protein base. We'll give them some minerals and give them good forage, and you should have that. But I'll guarantee you, if you don't start out with good genetics, it doesn't matter what feed you give them, you're never going to get it. Start with the good genetics, give them the good feed, and you'll probably be amazed what you're going to get. All right, I've taken enough of your time this time around. We kind of did the rams. You've got an idea where my program is going. We'll come back in the next week or so, and now we're going to talk about the ewes that I'm, and their genetics that I'm going to breed to my rams. See you in a week or so.